Hello Polygoners, I am Shaft and you're watching today's daily cast. We've got an exciting game for you today and as you can see there is going to be a little bit of cheese but eh, it's not going to arrive for a while so might as well go ahead and introduce these players because here in the red Zerg Trunks playing on Odyssey Ladder Edition. It's none other than the potato, he's told me. Now, Tood Ming is opening for Hatch Gas Pull, which is not going to work out real well for him. I do not suspect because his opponent in the Blue Zerg Trunks has been mining gas and started Metabolic Boost after a very early pull. It's none other than Scarlet. Alright, so this is a very volatile matchup and scarlet herself has been playing a lot of very aggressive styles in this matchup um i'm not sure if this is a byproduct of her uh just staying in korea and you know korea of course is filled with cheese but one thing i do want to point out is the fact that here's where Tood ming's um first overlord is here's where scarlet's is so you can see they're always almost always in a mirrored position so using that information scarlet of course can um send her links which you know would typically want to get there as fast as possible for the ultimate amount of damage possible she's gonna send them right here to this tower and let them sit here where she knows that this overlord is going to arrive here at a certain time she can match that by the time her overlord arrives here so she's just gonna uh hold these links back She's already sent these links forward, so the first eight came over here, and she's continuing to pump links, just holding them back out of vision. Now, at this point, Tood Ming is going to see that, you know, guess what? There's not going to be any creep spread, and he just saw the link speed. So, at this point, Scarlet is going to go ahead and show everything, and looks like she came in here and got a little bit of a surround on the queen, but not trying to get the perfect surround. There we go, We're getting the perfect surround, now going to go ahead and get out of there with those lings. You definitely want to kill off the queen. That's a huge amount of production loss in her favor, and this other queen going to be forced to be part of the wall off. The drone's going to be parked there as well. Great use of hold position. That's going to make it nearly impossible for Scarlet to, uh, to rush past these or to do any real damage, and in fact, pulling off those weakened drones. This does mean that Tood Ming is going to sacrifice this hatchery or try to pull off some of the links. Ah, oh, he almost created a wall off, but looks like Scarlet not going to fall for it, not going to run into those banelings either. We'll get this hatchery, which is great for her, but um, her own hatchery going to be uh, about a queen behind. Oh, going to have a second queen coming up, a third queen coming up as well, but she has not been mining gas for quite some time. You saw earlier that she had pulled out of this. Still has not replaced it. We've got a little bit of a ling war going on here with both of these players having a ling speed. That means a lot of these lings can oh, circle back around. We'll check on those momentarily. Looks like these lings are going to see that this hatchery is in production. Some lings and mainlings are going to be rolling, rolling, rolling. But these lings getting back in position to deal with uh, Tood Ming's offensive links so we've got offense and defense on both sides of the map defense right now swinging in for Tude Ming to knock off Scarlet's offense and we've had wait was there a run by where's those oh here's the links just chilling just chilling some more links gonna be swinging right on over there very careful to avoid these overlords very very strong Overlord knowledge from both of these players to be able to avoid them so quickly. Now this Overlord is going to scout everything. Queens are going to be positioned to knock this uh, Overlord back, but Lings and Bane is going to be protecting that. That Overlord will get away. And we've got some more Banelings in production for Tood Ming. Remember, Scarlet has not been able to make a Baneling nest, much less any kind of Banelings. So skipping that in order to um, like to get a better economy behind her all-in, she's now got a decent economy. She's done some damage. She got her uh, expansion a little bit quicker. Saw a little bit of a uh, her light harassment down over here on this side and just killing off these Banelings. Good choices here. And as this is happening, more Banelings being morphed over here. So it's all going to be about pure Ling defense against a Baneling offense. I really think this is going to be the main attack here for Tood Ming. And we got the Banelings rolling, rolling, rolling. Now, only two Banelings would be necessary to kill off the majority of this army. But it looks like, ooh, key transfuse is going to help, but it's not targeting the Banelings. Banelings trying to kill off one at a time to kill off that. 
uh, spine crawler. It looks like that will happen, and actually Scarlet losing a lot of her army here at the natural, but a lot of two Ming's army is split off over here trying to kill off the drone count. This Baneling Nest still only about three quarters of the way done, even after all of this. Queen's doing a good job pushing this back. Some more Ling's going to be reinforcing for Tud Ming, though, and there's no more offense on Tud Ming's side of the map. So Scarlet going to be in a completely defensive posture at this point. Now these Baneling's are getting scouted out, and uh, Scarlet going to chase those away. Looks like she's going to be forced into a retreat path, though, as Tud Ming brought some of his own units to chase her all the way back to the natural. But we've got the Baneling's morphing in at the natural again, and the Queen's a little bit forward, definitely got transfused energy on at least one of those, and it looks like we are going to have the engagement, but the Banelings about to be morphing. Looks like the Lings are going to swing up into the main, as well as uh, some reinforcements coming down here into the natural as well. So it looks like, oh, oh, ah, yeah, the, the Banelings getting some great hits off there. That could actually be the end of this attack, these Banelings killing off um, quite a bit. These are two Ming's Banelings, but uh, actually, man, this is getting, this is getting... Quite insane. We've lost 14 workers for Scarlet, only two for Tude Bing, but the worker counts are neck and neck. This is actually turning out to be a pretty phenomenal game. So at this point, we do have Tude Ming taking a third base, but uh, doing a pretty good job sending off a couple of lings to kill off these Bane lings and just really stop any potential uh, destruction of the third base, but Scarlet still not choosing to take a third base of her own. She is getting plus three gas while working on the lair. My, considering the fact that she has skipped so much gas, I would highly, highly guess that she is considering investing in mutilisks, which are of course always a good thing in a ZVZ, uh, as they do give you pretty much unparalleled uh, map control uh, for the for the mid game and can even help you lead into something like a lurker attack. Now this third base does survive, but it looks like some mainly is going to be coming in here, and uh, we're not going to give up on this attack just yet. Oh, some great hit there by Tude Ming's Baneling, taking out most of uh, the Lings there for Scarlet. Scarlet, on the other hand, is going to be producing a spire nine roaches in production for Tude Ming. So Tude Ming going for that Roach transition. Looks like he will be the player on the offensive, but here's the weird thing. As a player with the third base, he should not be on the offensive. It should be up to, um, up to Scarlet to force some kind of attack, but Tude Ming definitely showing his own proclivities towards aggression in this matchup. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Ling's actually going to be getting, well, he's going to avoid the queens. I would have targeted those queens immediately. Those would have been some huge pickups, but, you know, Tude Ming is definitely a much better player than I am. Ah, that's the key. He wanted to peel off these two Banelings and try and get them into a mineral line. We'll see if Scarlet is going to have the uh, presence of mind to scout around for that. Yes, yes, indeed she is. Boom, cancel. All right, and this is going to be knocked right on out now behind this the roaches have been moving across the map and rather than you know targeting those uh, the well These forward Queens um, which you know, that's a lot of injects that could have been uh, canceled But uh, the roach is gonna be swinging in here lings getting a good surround there Baneley's going to be pretty much wasted at this stage in the game and boom there we go There's the last of the Baneley's we got the Queens and the lings though We're gonna be knocking the roach ling army back as it is on creep now good Transform into a ravager here always morphing in the weakest of your roaches as those ravagers that gives you a lot more HP uh, in your overall army Maybe not in the unit itself. And here we go. The Mutalisks have spawned onto the map. And it looks like Tude Ming not having that much to deal with this on the um, the blue side of the map. Uh, he may want to consider getting some Spore Crawlers in his main natural and third base. As he does still have the economic advantage just slightly. Um, his third base has been up quite a bit. But um, his, his opponent... Definitely ahead on the workers as present. Here we go, though. There's some of those are getting killed off, and uh, yeah, very very even game. But I think I think the mutalists are gonna give um, give Scarlet just the slightest of advantages to being gonna try and reset this third base though. While this is happening, some Baneys are gonna be morphing in in the main. Cannot let those finish. Good job uh, kill, targeting those with the mutalists, and it looks like some of these lings are gonna be peeling up off this third base. But you do not want to. Uh, Look, too many of the Mutalisks show up as you will not be able to kill off that third base. And here are the Banelings. There's the GG coming from Tude Ming. Scarlet taking this first game on Odyssey. Ladder edition.
I really do think a lot of the um, this came down to decision making on the part of Tude Ming, but also from that one moment in um, Scarlet's Main when Tude Ming just forgot about those Lings and that one Bane Ling killed off like m half his army, that was a pivotal moment. But then finally this last moment where he didn't just go kill the third and instead allowed Bane Lings and Mutalus to show up, this higher level tactical tech, I think that was also a mistake. Had he reset that third base, this would game would still be going. One player playing with a technological advantage in the form of mutalisks. One player playing in the form of an economic game in the form of three base against two. And in those situations, while you know one player can't afford more, you can still use the technical advantage, the ta uh, the technology advantage as a tactical advantage, and use that to even the economies. Once you can even the economies, the player who already had the tech advantage is in the lead. So it's all about how these things start to match up. Anyways guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, please leave a comment in uh, the comment box below. Like and share this video. Let me know what you guys think, what players you guys would like to see. And until next time guys, Chatelet my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.